Welcome to Oran, Algeria, with this beautiful view behind me. So I am here in this city in Western Algeria, right on the coast. Stunning, stunning city. So Oran is one of the major cities in Algeria, one of the top like two or three cities. And it's known as being one of the most liberal places in the country. So Iran is, is much more uh, liberal compared to the rest of Algeria. And it's also known for its beautiful French architecture. So I'm actually walking along this uh, really amazing promenade with a beautiful view behind me. And so excited to show you guys more of this city that we're gonna explore today on my first day here in Algeria. But actually, my third time coming back to this country. I really like this country because people are so kind and friendly and it's a, it's a country that's less traveled, and I think that makes it a, a really interesting place to come and visit. So I'm very excited to share with you my vlog here today in Oran. Thank you, thank you. Funny thing in Algeria is when you bust a camera out, and especially when you speak in English, you get a lot of attention, and it's, 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 uh, it's not negative. It's like, uh, they're just like, oh, Oh, this guy's not from here. Welcome to Algeria. Everyone really wants to make sure you have a good time. And that's one of the things I, I, I love about this place is just that the people are so kind and like go out of their way to be nice to you, especially if you're not from there. So some of the squares like this behind me, the really old buildings, gives it this uh, Mediterranean, old French kind of feel. Like I feel like I'm in Southern France, maybe Southern Italy, something like that. Uh, that's something really unique about, Al I mean, a lot of Algeria on the coast kind of has that French vibe, but like particularly Oran. I mean, I feel like uh, you, in, in Southern Europe somewhere. Um, so it's really interesting seeing, seeing all this architecture in North Africa, um, but absolutely beautiful. And you know, kind of has that that same vibe of those those southern French towns. Are like they were grand years and years and maybe even centuries ago, and they've kind of uh, fallen into a little bit of disrepair. But it still has that like amazing charm of of sort of restoring or, or keeping the natural beauty here, keeping it how it was. Um, really amazing. Love the architecture. Now we're out in front of the famous Disco Maghreb. You can see this right behind me. So this was featured in a DJ Snake video that really made it popular, but it was actually very popular in Algeria for a long time before that video. So Disco Maghreb is a um, like a record store and they used to sell cassettes and the cassette with Disco Maghreb was what was featured in the DJ Snake video in this location. They shot a lot of places around here. What it's really famous for is being like the record store for Rai music, which is from Oran, and these hi, Cheb hello, artists. Hello. Hi. I talk to you about very, very important subject. So, hi, yeah. how are you? I am from Algeria. <laughs> yes. I live in Sidi Bel Abbas. I, uh, I am tourist in this place. This Disco Maghreb is very famous. Very famous. Yes. Great. Hasni is here and Tupac. Yes, yes. Great. So what do you think about this country? The best I love it. It's great. Oh, uh, yes. Where yeah. are you from? Uh, America. Uh, American? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, you very anything, much. just be told me. Thank you. Very Where nice to your... meet you. <laughs> like uh, Instagram and not that you have. I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can, Yeah, you can look me up. <laughs> Give me a moment. I want to have a... Okay, no problem. I'll get... finish my video. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, nice to meet you, Ken. Yeah. Met a very nice guy there, stopped me in the, in the middle. Um, yeah, so Rai Music 
Sheb, um, Sheb artist. So Sheb Khalid is like one of the really uh, famous artists behind that. And so that DJ Snake song actually incorporates that Rai music into the video. And so DJ Snake is actually, his mother is Algerian. And so he wanted to pay homage to his heritage. He he's, I, I think it was born in France, but Algerian mother. So to pay homage, he created that song that uses um, some of those Rai sounds um, and named it after this record store that really popularized that type of music that is still extremely popular to today. And so we're outside of it right now. Unfortunately, it's closed. I heard it's like mostly closed. Maybe sometimes it's open, but let's go and check it out. Right, so we can see, here's the entrance and you see Disco Maghreb. Um, unfortunately, it is closed, but it would be so cool to, to go inside and see this place. But yeah, back in the 80s, this was like really popular. And back when they had cassettes and you couldn't like, obviously you couldn't download music on the internet. So the only way you'd get new cool music is coming to a place like this that was really popularizing it. And so that's why it is so important and sort of the history of music in this city. I'm now here in what would truly be the center of Oran, this beautiful park surrounded by these just unbelievable buildings. Um, really interesting, like French classical architecture. We've got this opera house over here with really, really beautiful statues and carvings on the top. We've got, um, I think this is like a government building behind me here. You can see the flag. Also, um, just really ornate carvings really kind of giving that that classic French feel, even like these trees and everything, really gives like a, that, that Mediterranean vibe. And that's something I, I find so beautiful about Oran. So yeah, enjoying uh, just walking around here and uh, seeing what comes my way. Come on. Hello, how Hello. are you? You want to be Fine. in my vlog? <laughs> Fine. Fine. Yeah, nice to meet you. People here, when you pull out the camera, they, they get very friendly, so. <laughs> but yeah, beautiful city. The next place I'm going now is the Bay's Palace. This, I believe, is like an Ottoman um era palace so this this area was like all under ottoman empire a long time ago and so a lot of their buildings and architecture are still here but first i'm going to go into this supermarket um i want to get something to drink i'm, I'm a little thirsty and i want to just show you what it's like in an algerian supermarket so let's uh let's walk in here the kauja supermarsh So we're gonna find a cold drink. I know, yes, here it is. This is what I want. These are like the two classic. Hamoud Cola, very Algerian, and Selecto. Actually, this is my favorite. Um, older than Coca-Cola, this drink, Selecto. Kind of tastes like a cream soda. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy it, and uh, I'm good thing I'm at a supermarket. I've got a huge bill. Um, that I want to break. And so they should be able to do that for me. You can see it's it's pretty busy with people. But uh, maybe we'll come this line. Less people here. So we've got the uh, Selecto here. So this is like a classic Algerian drink. As I mentioned earlier, it's older than Coca-Cola and uh, I love getting it when I'm here. So let's try it. It's delicious. It's very much like a cream soda. It reminds me of, um, if, if you've ever been to Peru, it's exactly like Inca Cola. That's like the most spot on uh, interpretation of this. But Inca Cola is also just like a cream soda. But yeah, good stuff. Selecto, one of the oldest, maybe the oldest drink in Algeria. So we are coming to the 
Bay's Palace, or Palais du Bay, as, as they call it. And you see here a, a little cat. Hello. Oh, <laughs> she's scared. <laughs> I, uh, I made her scared. But lots of cats in Algeria, all of North Africa. It's, uh, it's kind of an Islamic thing. The, you see more here, they're actually in the trash. This is like a little kitten and her mother there. Oh, see her jump. Um, ooh, this one looks nasty. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's kind of a Muslim thing, um, Islamic thing. I think in the Quran it says like, you know, you're not supposed to have dogs as pets. Um, I don't know exactly what it says about cats, but um, you see this like overall Islamic countries that, you know, there's a lot of cats and rarely any dogs because I think it's like forbidden to have dogs as a pet unless they're, you're allowed, to, you're allowed to have them if they're like working for you, if they're serving some sort of purpose like hunting or something, but um, not uh, as a pet. So that's why you see all the cats. So now we're outside of the palace, the wall here. So yeah, I actually came here on my first time to Oran but I didn't walk, I, I came in a car, so I'm seeing it. But uh, the gate looks closed up ahead. So we'll have to see if it's open. It said on uh, Google Maps that it would be open today until 5 p.m., but uh, I'm not sure about that. Well, it is closed. <laughs> see the, oh, maybe, maybe they're gonna let me come in. Ah, merci, merci. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're letting me come in. <laughs> Good. Hola, ticket. Yeah. It's right. 100 dinars. 100 dinars, okay. <coughs> uh... Voilà. Merci. So 100 dinar to come and visit the Palace du Bay and they, they let me in even though they're closing. Yeah. Salam. Uh, 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 Ka minutes? Or, uh, uh, or we, we close at uh, four, uh, five. 16, 65 okay. Half and half. Okay, I'll be quick, thank you. Merci. Welcome. They're closing soon, but they, they let me come in and, and take a look around. Um, so I'll be quick, but yeah. So 100 dinar. That's uh, less than 50 cents, so very cheap to come in. And that's good, I mean, um, I appreciate that they uh, give a good price uh, so people can actually come and come and enjoy it. Um, so less than the cost of this, and, and there's no way you'd get into a place in the US for the cost of one of these, so that's pretty cool. Oh, and there's some other people in here. So I think they must have just closed and were kind enough to let me in. So from my last visit, I remember a few things because we did have like a one of the people show us around, but it was all in French and my friend was translating. But these are like the royal stables. They would have like horses down here. I do remember that. There's this kind of like unfinished building that was some sort of hotel project that uh, they constructed and then maybe r money ran out. You can see that there. These, these are just some details I remember. And then coming up here, it's gonna be this beautiful garden uh, that's really incredible. Definitely in that Ottoman style and some rooms in there that are very beautiful. This is one of those really incredible rooms in here, but hmm, we'll have to see if this door opens. Maybe. Oh, it does. Wait. Oh, it's kind of locked, but 
maybe we can uh, can kind of take a peek in here. That's kind of the best view you're gonna get. Um, but yeah, really beautifully decorated ottoman rooms in there. Um, one of the one of the really cool things about this place. Maybe we can get a good view in here. Let's try and. So I don't know if that was any good, but <laughs> that's the, the place. But then there's like a, some more rooms back in here, I remember. So let's come through. You can see these ceilings, incredibly painted. Some of the fresco work, unfortunately, peeling. But uh, really, really beautiful. This place must have been very grand. Salam. And just a wonderful view here as well. You can see up there, so that fortress, that's Santa Cruz. There's like a church up there and a fortress up there. That's one of the popular places to visit. You get a really amazing view of the city. Um, but also here is another popular place. So I'll show you some of the balcony. You can come around. You can see kind of a bit of a rundown area over here. But Just beautiful, the architecture here. This is the window here. If we actually go around, we might be able to come back inside and show you that room. So let's go take a look. Yeah, come in here. Wow. I mean, just see how much work it would have taken to, to, to do these and carve these out. Really incredible. It's kind of, kind of a shame the condition it is in, especially, you know, the graffiti. I mean, this looks like repainted over, so I'm sure they can just fix that, but still, um, definitely a shame given sort of the heritage of this place. Beautiful window here, but unfortunately, you know, broken, a few pieces left, but see really incredible work here on the glass. Yeah, just an amazing place, a lot of history uh, from the Ottoman Empire when they were here, and. You know, one of their furthest reaches all the way out here. Very interesting. If I remember from my tour, this room is where they had the concubines. So there's all these different little rooms around this, uh, this foyer. And I guess uh, the, the king or the ruler, I'm not sure the actual title, uh, would have had all his women here staying in these different rooms. Pretty crazy how, how things used to be, but really, uh, really beautiful architecture. I love the, the blue floor here. And all the tiles are really... Hi, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, photo, okay, sure, sure. We'll take a, we'll take a photo here. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Ah, very good. And I can, yeah, if you want, sit with that oh, one, yeah. Thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. Bye. Took a Took a photo with the kid here. The thing in Algeria is I don't know if they know me or they just know that I'm a foreigner. Um, it's, uh, I, I have no idea. So <laughs> I feel like my first time here, um, I, I was not very popular at all on social media. And uh, they, um, they were still taking pictures with me, so I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, well, that's the tour. There's the stables, but there's not much to see down there. So that's the Bay's Palace. Very beautiful spot here in Algeria. 
And one more place we're going. This is the fortress, which is directly adjacent to the, the palace here. Now this, I can't remember anything about, but there's like a tunnel here that goes down. And I'm not sure, I, I hear it just goes and goes. Ooh, it's creepy. You see this? I, I'm gonna turn on the light on my phone, but I mean, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't know where that goes. I do not wanna find out. Maybe a portal to hell or something down there. But yeah, old, old kind of fortress. Uh, Kind of some sketchy stairs there. I don't know if I'll try it. Uh, maybe these are these are actually uh, made of stone. So, uh, but it looks looks closed up there. So, yeah, some sort of uh, military installation here, right on the coast. So view of the ocean right in front of us as we come out. As you can see, would be a pretty good vantage point. There's a sketchy dog looking at me over there. But he seems to be chill. <laughs> yeah, so we can actually come over here. It's like a little bit of a lookout. So this is the port of Oran below. You can see some of these, these ships here. A lot of trash. That's definitely a problem in Algeria. But the port of Oran, protected from the sea. Some of these uh, ships coming in here delivering goods. Some private boats down there. That would be fun. Maybe come back here in the summer and find someone with a boat. Enjoy this, uh, this place. There's actually some islands out there. I'm not sure where. They're like a natural reserve um, that are, are, are known to be like incredibly beautiful and nobody actually lives on them. Um, and I don't know if you can technically set foot on them, but I know you can you can go there and snorkel and scuba dive and stuff like that. So maybe a future trip come here in the summer, that would be pretty cool. So as we continue on this journey, this adventure through Oran, Algeria, um, I'm leaving the palace, I'm trying to figure out where to go next. And I saw on the map, it's a place called Bastille Market that looks popular, but it's getting towards the end of the day. It's about 4 p.m. We've maybe got an hour to hour and a half left of sun sunlight. So I might be closing down the market, but uh, I don't know what to do now. So I'm gonna go walk over there and take you with me and we'll see what we can find. So it does appear that the market is happening. There are lots of vendors all around me. It's just at the beginning. See uh, this gentleman here selling some oranges. See lots of uh, dry goods. You see the bread here. Let's uh, let's quickly cross the street. Wow. Yeah, look at all this Algerian bread. Ooh, looks delicious. So we've got the classical circle one here that they sell in halves, and then we've got all the French bread, of course. Salam. Oh, this guy. Oh, snails. Wow. They look still alive. Man. Some of them are moving. Wow. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, oh, you want me to try? Oh, okay, one. <laughs> Just one. One? One, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna, he's gonna give me one of the snails. Ooh. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna pull it out here. Is the spaniel? Ooh, ooh. Okay, trying a snail here in Oran. Oh, it looks, it smells pretty good. It smells soupy. It's not bad. It's actually very good. Very savory. Got a nice soup broth in there. Um, if you can get over the snail, I would recommend it. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> All right, well, we, we tried a, a snail here and... Uh, sorry? Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Oh, you want, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, snail. Interesting. Sorry? English. You're English, yeah. American. American. America. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You see, people people are very friendly here. But yeah, so try the snail. I would recommend it. I think it's good. Um, I I still in my mind, it's hard, hard to hard to like square that one. But it did not taste bad. And uh, yeah, I, I could eat more of it. Seems to be a lot of dates, oranges, olives, and bananas. But we've got some other things. We've got the, let's see here. We've got the spicy pepper, of course. That's uh, they, they really like spice in Algeria. Not everyone, but they put it on like harissa, all these things. A uh, very, very common like addition is spice. The, the food itself isn't spicy, but you can add it for sure in Algerian cuisine and all, really all of North Africa, Morocco as well. They do that. Well, that is a head of a cow and uh, the eye is open. It looks like it's looking at me. <laughs> how are you? Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. That was, uh, that was disturbing to see. <laughs> Just out there, head of the cow, eye open, kind of looking at me. We're getting into more of the fish section of the market. Still got different vegetables and things, but. Uh, you can smell the fish for sure. <laughs> it's kind of got more snails here. You see, um, yeah. Oh, and then this guy. Oh, uh, and I. Oh uh, wow. Ah, so you eat the this. No, uh, this. Ah, la viande. Yeah. Oh, okay. You you you. Oh. Eat, very good. Very good. Very oh. Good. <laughs> okay. He's, okay, he's taking off the horns here. But he says the brain is very good. That's something they, they like to eat. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you see our, our cow here. Yeah, so in Algeria, they, the cow head, the, the sheep head, all of that is definitely a specialty. And uh, they're known to consume all parts, including the brain. And. Um, I am known to eat a lot of things, but that is one of those times where I really draw the line. I think uh, eating cow brain uh, goes a little too far just for fear of like diseases. Think of like mad cow and stuff. You know, 30 years later, I'm gonna find out I have prion disease and go mad because of that time I ate a cow head in Algeria. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll hold off on that one. <laughs> but surprisingly, I think Algerians eat it all the time. It's a specialty here. And uh, this country is not, as far as I know, has tons of cases of, you know, mad cow disease or anything like that. So, um, you know, I'm not sure, maybe it's safe, but me personally, it's, it's just a little bit too far from my, my comfort level. 
So I've left the market now. I'm on my way to the cell phone store. I need to get a SIM card for my phone so I can have an Algerian number and start using the Yasir, which is a taxi app you can use to, to book cars uh, to go to my next location. And so I need a, um, a SIM card to do that with a local phone number. But I noticed this, this interesting thing behind me. So it's a, it's a doctor's office and you might think like, okay, that's kind of random. Just in a, in a neighborhood here, um, just uh, like a private doctor's office. And so one really interesting thing I've noticed all around Algeria, there's so many doctor's offices just in residential areas in the city. And so I asked someone about it recently and found out that um, they've got a public health care system, but it's, you know, government run, very, very bad, very poor quality. And so a lot of doctors um, don't want to work because the salaries are so low there. So they start their private practices and um, maybe in the US, you know, most of ours is private, but we have it, you know, it's gonna be in a hospital, it's gonna be in doctor's office buildings, but here it's like out of people's homes. It just is like a doctor's office is like a, an apartment. Um, and then there you might have different services, like a dentist office, you might have neuro neurology, um, you know, other sorts of doctor services just in these like random homes. And so it's, it's very interesting, it's just something um, I've noticed about Algeria uh, walking around. I have found the cell phone store to get my local SIM, Oridu, in front of me here. Uh, they told me that's the best. So that's what I'm gonna get. And uh, let's, let's cross the street here and come in this shop and we'll get my SIM. Got the SIM, it works. So I'm back online here and uh, it took a little longer than I thought, but had to show him my passport and get registered and that takes a few minutes, but it's working, internet working. So that means I'll be able to use the taxi app Yasir and then order a taxi to go places. Cause you need like a, they need to send you a SMS to like start your account. And so that's what I'm gonna need. But um, yeah. We're good to go. So now I'm gonna go try some local food. There's kind of, so it's, it's, it's actually, it's challenging to eat out in Algeria and eat local food. Reason be, being, most people make their local food at home and if they go out, they want foreign food, they want fast food, something different. And so um, it's challenging. But I saw a restaurant on Google Maps that looked really, really traditional. And so I'm walking over there, hopefully it's open and uh, I can try some, some awesome Algerian food. Well, that's it. So this obviously didn't work out. So we're gonna keep uh, searching here. Maybe we'll find uh, some traditional Algerian food, but strike one, let's see what we can find on, on strike two here. Bonjour. Uh, Karen Tika. Oui. Oui, oui. Merci. Comme ça, on vient Ici, c'est bon. C'est bon? Mm. Un petit con? Elle ça? Ah, oui, oui. oui. Merci. Merci. Getting Karen Tika, which is a local specialty here in Oran and uh, he's putting harissa in it, which is very spicy. Ça, c'est le meilleur repas au Algérie ici. Um, ça, je je n'ai pas le français bon. Mais si c'est bon, oui. Merci. Il sait combien? C'est combien? Uh, Deux La moitié de ça. La moitié. Ok. Merci. Au revoir. Ha! I got some Karen Tika. This is like a classic. I just saw it um, and decided to try it. So it looks almost like a a cake of some sort. 
Um, so let's try it. First time trying Karen Tikka here in Oran, the specialty. Mmm, it's good. I don't know what it is. Um, maybe it's egg? You know, I'll have to look it up and tell you. But it's very good. I'm a, I'm a fan. And I love the harissa. Gives it a nice... Gives it a nice spice. So, this will tide me over. But I'm headed now to where I think there is a local restaurant. I found, I was doing some Googling. And I think I found a place. But I gotta take the tram to get there. So, uh... I see the tram stop ahead of me, so I gotta buy a ticket and then get on that tram and uh, we'll, we'll figure out where to get off. But I know where I'm going. Just got off the tram, so um, it was very crowded, so I couldn't really film on there. But um, yeah, I, there's there's like no stops on the map, so I, I think I was nervous that I would be stuck on it for a long time. But um, I'm pretty close to the restaurant, so we can try and go there. I have made it to the traditional Algerian restaurant and this place is amazing and I'm so lucky they're open. I'm the only person here. And so I'll give you a little tour because it's really cool. You can see this like very traditional Algerian look all around the booths you can stay in. And so this place, it's called, um, let me get the name. It's called Kaima, and that means tent in Arabic. And so it's like this traditional Algerian place. Feels like you're in a tent in the desert, sort of. I mean, as best they can do. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. You're like sitting down, eating on these cushions. Um, really interesting vibe. The other thing is this menu. And so the menu's like on a piece of leather. And so I'm having uh, rogag and, and viand. Uh, so that is a really popular traditional dish. And then harira and burak. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what they are. I have like a vague idea, but we're gonna try them and I'm really excited for it. Merci. Wow, look at this food. This I know is the burek. Some of these other things. Oh, merci. And some bread. Some of these other things look like some meze that you can have. So the harira is a soup, and this is a traditional soup in North Africa. Also um, common in Morocco, Morocco and Algeria. The difference is the Moroccan one uses lentils, the Algerian one doesn't. <clears throat> and so, I'm gonna try it. It's very hot. We're gonna try it and let you know. So it's, yeah, there's clearly no lentils. It's a lot thinner. But let's see, this looks really good. Oh wow, it's amazing. The spice, it's simple. There's like nothing in it. Very, very light soup, very kind of, but there's like an amazing amount of spice in there. Not like spicy, but different spices. Really light, full body flavor. I, I, I can't really describe it, but it's very good. Ooh, and it's piping hot. Let's try the next one. So this is burek. This is a tra very traditional and popular Algerian food also eaten throughout uh, North Africa and the Middle East. But uh, we, we put some lime on here, some lemon, sorry, and i um, gonna try it. And so it's like a, it's almost like a pastry um, on the outside at least. And then it's filled with uh, mashed potatoes, spices, cumin, different things. Uh, it sounds really interesting, so. Mmm, mmm. Damn. That's good. Wow. This is way better than I described it. Like absolutely delicious. And the lemon on it gives it like brings out the flavor. I think there's some meat in here. Um, oh wow. I could eat a lot more of these, but I want to try everything. So I'm not going to fill up, but wow. 
if I want to go crazy, one thing I can do here is put some of this harissa on it. The, uh, the pepper, hot pepper, known in Algeria and also all of North Africa, but delicious stuff. Mm. Pepper's got a kick. So, this thing is so delicious. Don't even put the pepper on it. Just eat it because it's so, it doesn't need anything. It is perfect. You can't make it better. I love it, wow. The main dish has arrived and this is called rogag. So it's basically thin bread and they put on um, some meat. In this case, uh, this is like some, some beef or lamb. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, probably lamb. And then they've added um, some potatoes and some carrots and this sauce here. And so you pour this sauce on the top and that is how you get the rogag, which looks absolutely amazing. Very excited to try this. So we're trying the rogag. It's very common in Algerian. Other dishes too, start with some bread and put some meat and soup kind of on top of it. That's a, a base and there's different kinds. I've had an, another kind previously, but uh, this one is the rogag and very excited. It's very good. It's um, It's got a lot of nice spices. I think the meat, the meat is very succulent. Um, yeah, a nice dish. I think I'm gonna add some harissa. I think that's really gonna spice it up. But if I had to rank them, I'd probably say soup, number three. It was good, but it was it's just thin. It's, it's not like, it has a nice flavor, but it doesn't have much in it. So it wasn't my favorite. I would say number two is this, very nice. But that burek, ooh. That was the best thing I had. That was like so far, I, and I don't know if it's just this place, but that was the best thing I've had in Algeria so far, definitely.